皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So today, guys, I guess this is kind of the series of Shogo is complaining, but I have a little bit more. Wait, it's not like complaining, but it's something I guess I want to explain to you guys. And I'm pretty sure for those of you who are listening to my podcast, it's nothing difficult for you guys to understand. But、uh, there's always these kind of people who just really like s、um, hating people, you know. Criticizing people and such. And I just wanted to make it very clear in this podcast to you guys and share it with at least you guys who are my close friends. So, what I'm going to be talking about today is actually about the online lessons that I do together with Six Sensei and on s k a l a Sensei and also all of his other students. Now, when I, we started this online lesson around the beginning of March, so at the point of recording, we ha- actually hasn't been even a month yet. And、uh, we made a video about it. We made a couple of posts about it. And we've already welcomed more than 50 students on our online lessons. And every lesson is really, really fun, by the way. We get to you know, see each other's screens and share our skills. And Six Sensei、um, doing it, performing it for, in front of us for us because we have a cameraman, which is also one of the instructors in Asahama h i n d u doing the detailed movements to show how everything is going. You get to see. The skills of Six Sensei that you wouldn't be able to see, for example, if you are a regular student, because you, because you won't be able to go right next to Six Sensei and see his wrist movement, right? For example, if you were just a regular student at a dojo. So, online students will actually get to see so much more than the regular students, to be honest. So, there are the pros and cons, obviously, being actually being in, in the dojo to train and、um, being in, on, in the online lessons and such. But it's been going great, by the way. All the students are. Um, hopefully, very satisfied.、Um, you, you might、uh, listen to this, might be one of our students actually. But so far,、uh, we've not had not even one person、um, canceling the lessons. No one has been saying any complaints、uh, about the quality of lessons and such because Six Sense is just really, really amazing and high, really, really talented, experienced. And the content of the lessons, although it's only、um, the techniques that you can train on your own, there's of course a lot that you have to master and train in, you know. So it's been going great. However, here we go. This is where it starts. However, we have been having a lot of people in the videos, a lot of people in the posts coming up to us and telling us how way too expensive the online lessons are. Now, to be honest, it's not cheap. It is not cheap. No, it's not. I understand that. It's, a do- it's $100 per month. And you get one lesson per week for one hour, but you do get to see the archive. And as I explained earlier, you do get to see different angles that a regular student、um, in person would absolutely not be able to see. Because the camera can go really, really close to Sensei, right? Yeah. So there are, of course, again, as I explained earlier, there are the good parts about doing online lessons in the first place. And there's a lot of people telling us that, you know, that's too expensive. Oh my gosh, you guys are thinking that you have so much skills. There's a lot of stuff I want to say on.、Um, Number one is when you find something you feel is expensive, it could be anything. It could be a very expensive watch. It could be a very, very expensive car. It could be a very, very expensive dress,、um, whatever it is, accessory, whatever it is. It's you that don't understand the value of it. That's how you know, the economy works. You can't sell something for, for example, let's say $100. And if there was no value, no one will buy it. And then you will have to make it cheaper, right? If you sell something at a certain price, and if there are people who are satisfied to buy it, then that value is correct, right? You know, that, that's like basic, economy, you know, basic economic knowledge、yeah, that you should have how the society works. Yeah. Going up to, for example, a Ferrari,、uh, Ferrari, how do, how do you say it in English? You know, the car, the brand car. In Japanese, it's Ferrari, but it's probably pronounced differently, right?、Um, or Rolex, for example, a watch. If you go up to a shop and you're not even going to be buying it, and if you go up to the shop clerk to tell them that, oh, your watches, your cars are so expensive, it's too expensive, you know, that would be very, very strange, wouldn't it? You know, you're the one who doesn't understand what 50 years of training is worth. You are the one that doesn't understand being able to interpret. I'm sorry, I'm talking about myself, but being able to interpret what a sensei and a detailed skills are explaining immediately into Japanese to English while that interpreter himself is actually doing training too. Are you going to be able to find someone like this easily somewhere on the streets? Obviously, no. 
right? That's number one what I want to say. Whenever you say something is really expensive, it's you that simply doesn't understand the value. There are a lot of people, for example, um, making it, delivering it, um, you know, showcasing it, or whatever it is. But there's a, obviously a reason why something is very expensive. Yeah, unless it's like I don't know a cult or something. It, that's a different story. But like 99% of the any kind of product sold on the market, that's how it works. You know, if you feel that something is much there's of course for me there are tons of stuff that are way too expensive for me that i don't understand like i would never buy for let's say a watch or a car i would never buy a dress a ring or whatever it is that's like um i don't know five million yen or whatever it is i would not buy it but would i go up to the people and tell them that they're buying something that's you know overly expensive and doesn't have that value no for the people who buy it that's valuable right that's the reason why they pay their money that that's easy easy as that you know i mean if you had enough knowledge to understand for example how distribution works or how much on um, uh, hiring a person t- costs money for example or how much um years and uh, effort it takes to gain a skill if you had more experience if you had more knowledge you would be unable to understand the value i have tons of friends who told me that Shogun, I would love to take part in the online lessons with Six Sensei, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too expensive. I can't afford it right now. I will try to take part as soon as possible if I can in the future. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm always like, I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. The lessons are a little bit expensive. Um, I hope we'll, you'll be able to join in the future. Yeah, that is very respectful because they understand why it's $100. Do you think you can go out in Japan on the streets and find someone like Six Sensei? No. You can't. Yeah. Someone who has that much skills, who is that um, generous to teach his skills so much to people all over the world and everyone who comes to dojo. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you like Japanese traditional culture, if you've probably heard before, but most instructors, so-called instructors and senseis, do not teach you anything in most cases. They don't tell you. They just they will tell you to just say, uh, just watch me do it and try to copy me kind of thing. They don't explain the details. And you know why? Because... If the students are taught everything, the teachers and instructors are afraid because it's a business that these students will grow up too fast and they won't pay them any, any more money. But Six Sensei is not afraid of that because he knows through his 50 years of training that his skills is not easily something that can, someone can just, you know, exceed very easily. Asai Meishin Yu is not a easy skill set, obviously. And he has full confidence in that. And what he wants to do is try to spread his duha. That's because that is the uh, the wish, the dream that he has, you know. Because he carried on the duha from his very, very important sensei, right? Yeah. So I'm going all over the place. Sorry, guys. So this is what the first thing I wanted to say to them. And number two, number two, um, I want to say that the reason why everyone is able to see Six Sensei's skills for free on YouTube is because of the people who support us in different places like online lessons or um, buying our merchandise or maybe our membership, you know. Thanks to these people paying money for us, we can continue our activities. You're not even paying anything. You're watching everything for free thanks to those people who are paying for us. And you still come up to us and complain about it? I'm like, (laughs) I cannot believe it. Like, what kind of attitude is that? Go ahead. Of course, our YouTube videos are free. Please watch them for free. It's completely okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not complaining about that. You know, that's completely fine. How you, that's how YouTube works, and that's how the system works. But if you take a take a look at it from a different point of view, we can't do it for free. Obviously, you know, Six Sensei is not cannot just volunteer everything. He he needs to eat food. He needs to have a house. You know, he needs to pay for electricity, for water or gas. I need to do that too. I need to, to get on the bullet train, you know, that costs a lot of money to go and back, go, go back and forth. And of course, hotel fees. Yeah. And of course, during those, you know, moving back and forth, I can't do any other job, right? That I won't be able to earn as much money if I can't get anything in from this. And of, of course, I do get a certain percentage from the online lessons because I work as an interpreter and I run the whole system itself. So I do get a percentage. And this is finally when I get paid for doing uh, work with the last sex say, by the way. So if I had nothing from this, I will not be able to continue. I'm not a volunteer person. Yeah. I mean, if we want to make this sustainable 
it obviously has to be something related to your business. And that's not anything bad or anything. That's just healthy, you know. So these are the two main things that I wanted to explain. And the reason why it's expensive, on um, I personally feel that's not cheap either. Obviously, $100 a month for one on hour lesson per week is definitely not cheap. But the reason why I said it, I set it up to this price as I explained before is because um, I'm the one that, that decides the prices of everything and I want to show respect to 68 of course yeah and I also want to keep the community um, a safe place too if we make everything very very cheap I'm not trying to say that um, everyone who is rich are good people and, and everyone who doesn't have money are bad people I'm not saying that but if you pay a hundred dollars for these lessons it does prove that you find value in it right so Right now, doing the Zoom lessons and meeting everyone, everyone is very, very respectful. Super, super respectful, by the way. The community is uh, bright. It, the atmosphere is nice. Everyone is very serious for the training, of course. And I am very, very glad I, I made the right decision to send it up to $100. Although I understand that not everyone will be able to join, but still for the people who are serious, we need to work for the people who are serious, who seriously want to do it, right? Yeah. So I, I really am happy that I made the right decision. I'm very, very confident that I did the right thing. Yeah. And I'm very happy too that I'm able to provide value to Six Sense Eight as well, um, bringing a lot of new students for him, and also, of course, the, the the fee, the lesson fees that everyone is paying, of course, will be paid to Six Sense. And Six Sense because he's that kind of person, he is always like, "No, I don't need any money. I don't have. I don't need any money to do this, so on and so forth." But he does. He does. It's. it's it was shocking when I heard that there was a timing when Six Sense was only earning earning only 70,000 yen a month, 70,000 yen a month. That's like, what, $600 a month? Yeah. And he was explaining that he, there was a couple of days where he wasn't eating anything. And because, and the reason is because, you know, traditional culture in, in Japan, as I explained before in a, a lot of other podcasts that is like, no, you shouldn't make money from it. It's supposed to be something holy and, uh, you know, precious. Taking money from it will make it vulgar, you know, that kind of stuff. But that is, from my point of view, it's completely wrong. How are you supposed to continue down your yuha and um, welcome more students and do more activities with only 70,000 yen a month? That is irresponsible, considering all of the people who have carried on the traditional culture for us, especially for us, I mentioned you. 16 is a 22nd headmaster. He cannot stop the yuha here, right? Yeah. It's going to be disrespectful for all of the other uh, predecessors. So in that case, it needs to be a business. And that's not a bad thing. Six Sensei and all of his efforts in the past decades are worth something. Yeah. And for those of you who don't understand it, please don't comment on our, on our chat, on our videos and our posts, because we don't need to see your messages. So whenever I see such comments, I will delete them very, very quickly. Yeah, especially because I'm not the only one involved in this channel. Yeah, if it was my own channel, Let's Ask Shogo, I might go and try to, to talk with them and explain some things. But Let's Ask Six and Say, it's also um, something that is involved with other people's feelings of the other people's brands and such. So I will immediately block and delete such comments, by the way. But I mean, if it's understandable, if it's something that's uh, negotiable, basically, or what they're saying is has some kind of logic, I will definitely read it or reply. But if it's just like, oh, this is expensive, if it's not worth it, there's literally people telling Six and Six, face straight up, telling that his skills is worthless. It's not worth $100 a month. Like, I cannot believe that. If you think so, just walk away. Why are you even watching our videos then in that case? Yeah. So this is what I wanted to say. Um, I guess this is not a series of Shogo is complaining, but more of Shogo is <laughs> pissed. <laughs> no, I just really, really don't get, I don't, I just really do not like the idea. It's not just Six and Six. It could be any, anyone else. It could be, for example, a chef, a, a chef who's dedicated 50 years of his life to cooking. And you go and eat his course meal. And he's one of the fam most famous people in the world. And the course meal, for example, costs, uh, I don't know, like $500, $600. And there's people who are not even going to be ordering it, who are not even going to be paying for it outside the restaurant, banging the door saying that's too expensive. <laughs> for me, that's unbelievable. I just wanted to talk with you guys about this. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening.
So then everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers dreams come true. So I know there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to, to Japan to study, travel or work, or even train our traditional culture like as I mentioned you've been talking about, right? However, I'm very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we're facing a lot of social problems, we are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generation supposed to be, who are supposed to be carrying on the good about things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I want to try to solve social problems, preserve and involve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a brighter future. And to do this, the nearest goal I have right now is to achieve 100,000 subscribers on my new Last House 60 channel, achieve 100 online students, and also welcome fit more than 50 guests per month and you should Samurai experience and all of the other activities that are in the description box. So I hope you can check it out for me. Guys, thank you so much for listening to such a long story. It's been a while since I've spoken for 16 minutes in a podcast, but thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a nice day or good night.